Let's see. So there are a couple of things that you're going for in here. One is this question about what phases are likely to be present and um, how much of each do you have? And then the second part on how, you, how will you achieve the final thickness from this five millimeter sheet? Okay, so here is our composition, copper with 40% zinc and 1% tin. I'm not gonna really bother about the tin, it's just sort of a, a small uh, percentage. And um, you can't really see this very well, but this 40% is roughly, let's see, right about here. Maybe we should sort of zoom into that. Um, so 35, this is 40 percent, this line right here. So the question is, if it was slowly cooled, what would be the um, composition? Now this might be something that throws you off, but the, the notion of slowly cooled means that really you're in uh, equilibrium. And this right here is actually the equilibrium phase diagram. So the phases that you see mapped onto this diagram are the phases that will exist if something is very slowly cooled uh, from the liquid phase. So I could directly use this two-phase region in order to um, calculate um, the, and determine which phases are likely to be present. So on the phase diagram, I need two pieces of information, and that is basically the temperature. Uh, we need the temperature and we need the percent, percent of the component, in this case zinc. So the compos this is the composition. So we know that the composition is 40% and that's what that line is right there. Now what about the composition or, or um, the temperature? Well, it tells you in the problem, uh, you have a sheet of na naval bra brass. Uh, you know, if you have that sheet, you're, you are probably at room temperature. So the brass is probably at room temperature. So the temperature is down here. And so we draw our tie line across this, um, this uh, two-phase region right here, straight across. And um, you can see that at the, the, the endpoints, as you recall, the endpoints tell you uh, the composition of the individual phases. So this endpoint runs into the copper, you can't see this, but it's the copper solid solution, that's one phase, and this phase is gamma, that is a solid solution. So if I go directly down here, um, what I see f at this tie line endpoint is the composition of the gamma. What I see down here directly is the composition of the copper. So in terms of weight percent zinc, we know that the composition of the copper, reading directly off the diagram, is about 31% uh, zinc. And the composition of the uh, gamma is about 59% um, zinc. And my original composition, that's where the fulcrum is, we know from the problem that that is 40% zinc. Now notice I'm ignoring this 1% tin. Uh, it doesn't change things a whole lot, so I'm using 40%. So um, the composition of my phases then is simply directly read off from the tie line where it intersects the single phase region. So the composition of, of copper is, of the copper solid solution is this. The composition of the, um, g the g gamma solid solution is this, 59%. Uh, so what about the t tie line and the, the fraction of each phases? Well, again, if you looked at this, in order for this to balance, you know that the, the mass over here must be bigger than the mass here. So when you use the fractions of these tie lines, um, you're just going to use, on this side, you're going to use the larger fraction over the, the full length. So the fraction of uh, copper phase is equal to this larger fraction, which is 59 minus, 59 minus C naught, which is 40, divided by the whole length, which is 59 minus 31, which is approximately equal to 19 over, what is that, 28 over 28. about uh, 0.69. Now the fraction of the 
the gamma then is just equal to, since they add up to 1, is just 1 minus 0 0.69 is equal to uh, 0 0.31, that's the fraction. So what, what this tells us is that if I were to, you know, cut this sample open and somehow I, I saw, you know, different phases inside here, and these phases were perhaps the, um, the, um, the copper, this copper solid solution, and then the gamma. The gamma would roughly be only about, uh, about 31% of the area, whereas the copper solid solution would be about uh, close to 70, 0 0.69 by 0 0.69. Okay, so that's how you do that. Now, why didn't I look up here, or why didn't I go up here to this um, uh, transformation? I could have asked you a different question. I could have asked you, what is, is the volume fraction of pro eutectoid copper. Okay, so go back to this diagram. Now notice that upon freezing from the liquid phase, first you go through this, this first region right here. Now if you, this turns out, this is what's called a paratectic reaction. We didn't do this in class, but uh, this is almost the upside down version of a eutectic. Notice that this, the eutectic has the, the shape of um, this sort of, it, it looks like this. A eutectic has uh, something that looks like this, where you have some liquid going to two different solids. And a paratectic is almost the opposite. You have uh, essentially a liquid plus a liquid plus a solid. Uh, I'll just put alpha here. Liquid plus a solid, uh, actually converting, see here's the liquid, or excuse, whoa, here's the solid, here's the liquid, converting into a single solid down here. This is beta, so that's what you have going on here. This is the paratectic reaction where a liquid and a solid, in this case copper, convert into this beta phase. So that is going on here, you go in the beta phase, and then suddenly the beta starts decomposing. Now beta, beta starts forming this copper uh, phase. So beta plus copper in here, da, 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 da. down here, turns out that some of the beta that is left over will actually go through another reaction forming beta prime. And you keep cooling, keep cooling, and then you have a, down here a eutectoid. You might recognize this. One solid, beta prime, converting to this copper and this gamma. So you could follow these sets of reactions. And in, in every two-phase region, you can draw a tie line and figure out what the endpoints uh, tell you, which is the, the, the concentration of that particular phase. In this case, this dot right here. Uh, I don't know if you could see it, is the concentration of beta prime. Um, and then the, it creates this little tiny uh, tie line with a seesaw, uh, or a, it is a seesaw, and then you can co compute the fraction of each of the phases. You can do that in any two-phase region along this, this uh, um, original composition as it cools. But, and so you see, if I asked you what is the volume fraction of pro-eutectoid copper, you would have to actually go up to this temperature to get the answer. Oh, or maybe even higher, maybe this temperature, uh, depending on which eutectoid we were talking about. Um, pro-eutectoid copper, okay, yes. So this depends on which reaction. So the reaction that I'm referring to here, uh, I'll just write down as uh, beta prime going to copper solid solution plus gamma. This is the eutectoid reaction. Okay, so now, second part of this problem is, um, all right, what are we going to do about the fact that we want to get five millimeters thick down to two millimeters, our final product? Um, I tried to draw this. I did a terrible job. Do you know that when you take uh, let's say you're rolling out some pizza dough 
and you have some original thickness, you have an original width, and then you have some sort of original, original length. Notice that when you roll that pizza dough out, that it elongates in the direction of rolling and it gets thinner, but you know, not a lot happens with this W naught direction. So, um, you know, the cross-sectional area is equal to the thickness times the width, um, and the volume equals the length times the area, but as we know, the change in volume is zero. And what that leads to, as I did in class, is a set of equations where you get basically the negative, you, the reduction in area over the original area equals uh, the difference in, uh, I'm sorry, T naught over T. And this is actually equal to essentially the strain. Uh, so is the negative strain is the reduction of area. So on this phase, on this diagram right here, this axis is the strain, and this spot right here is where the 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 um, tensile specimen strains or fails. Excuse me, strain to failure, and it's about 0 0.37. So what we know is if we try to strain it beyond 37 percent, then it will basically break. So in order to do that, we, in order to get five millimeters down to two, you can see that that's more than half the thickness. So that's more than 50% uh, strain, more than 50% reduction in area. So in order to do that, you're going to have to go in stages. So what you'll have to do is follow a process that looks like this, uh, strain and basically anneal. So strain by either, you know, some you know, rolling, cold rolling, that's one, one option, strain and anneal. Or you can do hot rolling. But anyway, strain and anneal, and then basically go back, strain and anneal, strain and anneal. Keep doing this until you reach the reduction in area, which is what you want. This is close to 60%, 0 0.60, or 60% reduction in area. So you will have to follow this. So the question is, what happens during this annealing process? What's going on inside the crystal structure when you anneal and somehow you're able to, to strain it again? So that is our, our big question. And what it relies on you remembering is, what does straining do? What does cold straining or cold work do to do to the crystal structure? So something about the cold straining does something to the crystal structure. Something about annealing actually undoes it. You're doing something to the crystal structure here. You're undoing it here. What's going on in this cycle?